Hey guys, Richie here from All Over Hobbies. Welcome back to a brand new build series and it's the massive 16th scale Hobby Boss Tiger Tank. So here she is, massive box. Um, I've done a review of all this. I've got quite a few views interest on this one. So I thought, you know what, why not let's get a little build on it. So disclaimer out of the way, I don't, not big in accuracy. I'm all about building the models and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to rivet count over um, detail, that kind of thing. So I know pa Tiger Tank seem to get people pretty passionate. So this build is all about seeing how well it goes together outside the box, out, out of the box, should I say, um, minimal scratch building and just seeing kind of what we end up with. Um, for a pretty reasonably priced kit. No interior, just external, um, and there we go. So first up in this video, we're gonna do the tracks because if you're like me, the tracks are always kind of a bear to do, takes a lot of time, and while I'm excited about this build at the very beginning, I'll build the tracks, um, get them out of the way, and then do the exciting stuff afterwards. Although we do have 24 road wheels to do as well, so that might be after the tracks. Get that stuff out of the way, and then move on to the turret and all the exciting stuff um, after that. So it's gonna be a beast, it's gonna be pretty big, um, 16th scale, but again, pretty reasonably priced kit for what you get. So if you haven't already done so, check out the video um, of my review from a few weeks ago, and um, I'll go ahead and switch the camera and we'll get going on these tracks. Alrighty, so tracks. So doing this very first thing in the kit, I'm doing the tracks, um, just get them out of the way. And I might be a bit sadistic, but I actually like building tracks. You know, do five or 10 a day and you know, whatever at that time. And you know, I put good podcast on a TV show and they build up pretty quick. Um, and these are nice ones too. They go together with metal pins, um, fully workable as you can see here. And um, yeah, the only, oh. So a big bag here, they're all pre-cut, which is fantastic. The only issue is, oh, is um or are oh, there, there's four ejection pin marks in every single one now you could probably just leave it um i don't think you'd probably really no notice so much on the inside but i came to the conclusion well the epiphany recently my modeling but it's not about churning out kits as quick as possible it's about you know, taking time enjoying the build and you know the longer you take and you know it also makes it cheaper too right because you don't get going through so many kits but I just want to take my time and no giant rush to finish this thing. So why not just take care of ejection pins and get it where I want it to get. It's going to be a fantastic kit. Um, so let's take care of the pin mark. So did a few already. Um, so I put these few together and just primed it to see how it looked. A couple of different methods. And the method I'm going to show you I think is the best one. Now a couple of things with these. Um, I'd clean these ones up right ready. But um, there's a mixture. Some have recess, um, recess ejection pin marks. Some have... Um, you can see that they're raised. Some are raised, some are recessed. I think they're just from different kind of batches and different like sp sprues where they cut them, whatever. So, um, yeah. So, it's, yeah. So I, found, I think I found a method to take care of all these. So, like I said, I've done a few already. Um, put the metal pins in, and what I found with the metal pins, once you put the pins in, just a little bit of super glue, just regular super glue on one end with the cocktail stick, just you know toothpick, just dab a little bit on there, just keep the pins in place. So they don't slide out the bottom, um, and that was the top tip there. But yeah, see already there, you know, I've pretty much done 10 out of 96. So 96 on each side, so that's about 200 total, plus you got the turret, and there's four ejection pin marks on each. So you're looking around about 800 ejection pin marks to handle. So again, just do a little bit a day, you know, maybe work in other kits, and, and just you'll soon, soon add up, get rid of it. Um, so here's my method, which I think I kind of found the best with these guys. So first of all, taking my Citadel scraping tool, I'm just gonna scrape away any excess from each one. I'm gonna do these two here to kind of give you an example. So again, just scrape away any excess. Like so. Then, these are the, I did these ones already. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my Tamiya putty which is my favorite putty right now. Um, just a tiny little amount, again, on my on my toothpick or cocktail stick, and just gonna put a dollop on every, I don't want too much on there. I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit and I'll come back and just wanna fill the hole in each one, just like that. And like, so you go, so basically do that. Next one. Do 
don't need much at all. The more you put on, the more you'll sand off, right? So I'm just gonna put it on like that, make sure it fills the gap, and that is it. Leave it for a couple of hours, come back, and then in the, um, I find this stuff's really good for wet sanding too, but in, a, in an old sink, kitchen sink or whatever, get your uh, sanding stick and a um, little bit of water and just sand, sand it smooth. Once you've sanded smooth, just go ahead and put them together and um, build up your chain. Now that's the method I'm using to clean up my jack pin marks. You guys might have an easier way of doing it, but for me, after testing a few, this seems to be the best way of getting rid of them. So just, um, yeah, a little bit of scraping to get rid of the excess. Come back in with a little bit of um, putty on each hole. You see, I did eight holes there in the space of like 30 seconds. So it's not hours worth of work here. And then just once they're dry, a couple of hours later, come back and sand it all back. Um, and then just ready to go. And then I'll see, I'll prime these just to see how they looked. Um, so not perfect by any means, but, um, but yeah, so you see the tracks actually look really nice. Workable, really chunky size being 16 scale, and those metal pins, you know, again, there's a lot of super glue just holding in place. Um, very cool. So these aren't gonna fall apart at all. I don't, hopefully not. Um, so that's it. So I'm gonna head work for the rest of these guys and um, we'll come right back. All right, so you can see here a um, hive activity, all this stuff going on. Um, just wanna show you a couple of things I found, again, which really helped with this process. Um, firstly, is I'm sanding it in dust everywhere. After every few, this guy um, off Amazon, a little desk vacuum cleaner. These guys are about um, like $12 or something, but it works really good. So basically, when I sanded all this dust on my desk bench here, it sucks it all up, so you're not getting dust all over your workspace. So this is working great after every five or so, you know, when I sand right here, I mean, just, I, I mean, like I mentioned before, you can wet sand it in the sink or just here on the bench. It sucks it all up, no problem at all. Um, second thing is, you get lots of things at your local like dollar store um and one of these is like one of these like makeup brushes a big fluffy brush and this is working great because um when i'm sanding this or dust it just brushes right off um really clean up again just vacuum it up so i've put a couple of pins in here and i'm just going to kind of show you uh, what i got going on um so you really just slot slot it in take the metal pin and as easy as this it just pushes right in like that and that's it so Again, just working through, pretty straightforward. Just clicks into place. Push it all the way in, and the final one. Again, with these nice metal track pins you get. Okay, so I've done one, two, three, I've done five. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my super glue, and just gonna put a tiny little bit At the end of each one, um, it's going to spread it in with this dirty cocktail stick I have here. And I keep flipping. I've been in America for you know, 17 years now, but I still keep flipping between English and American. So I know English cocktail stick, American um, toothpick, right? You'll find that in a lot of my videos. I just flip between American and English. Um, so you just want to push these through, um, make sure they're flat, both sides, not sticking out. And. Um, I don't know why I did that. I pushed <laughs> push the superglue part with my finger. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, so just that little superglue in the end just keeps the pin in place. And, you know, it still doesn't affect the um, articulation or the movement of these tracks at all. So that's it. Um, nice big set of tracks. We take care of all those seam, li um, seam lines, all the um, jack spin lines. Just going to work it all the way up, 96 on each side. Um, but obviously, you know, at the very end, once it's all painted and weathered, we'll put them together and the pin just fits straight through and um, hopefully secure them together. So... There we go. So I'm gonna let these this dry because it's gonna get a little bit here on my fingers and make sure this flat again. Um, put to the side and um, just work through the rest of these um, like five or six at a time. So I just wanna show you that. Um, again, a little vacuum cleaner works great. Um, well, I can show you that live, I guess. Just sanding these down. And as always with um, with fill, you know filling and, and that kind of stuff, the less you put down, the less you have to sand. If you put cake, cake it on with tons of filler, you can be sanding all day. So, sand down, then with this polisher, get rid of some of the um, scratches. Not that you probably see many of this stuff, so it's going to be inside the tracks and behind the wheels, probably, but hey, I'm just doing a very thorough job. So, like that, um, then take my brush, clean off all the dust. Then a vacuum.
done. So with power of editing, I'll come back in many hours' time, and you'll see um, hopefully a full side of these things made up. Okay, so I've done one set of tracks um, for one side, and here she is, all ninety-six in her glory. Oh, dropping them. So yeah, time-wise, ooh, I'd say probably about guessing probably about six hours of manpower to do these um now what i found was doing 20 or 30 at a time um was about the max any more than that my i was kind of my wrist was hurting from all the sanding and stuff and was ejection pins so about 10 really 10 20 10 throughout the day you know various person 20 30 a day um you can knock it out you know three or four days um not bad at all and i actually quite enjoyed it it was fun put some you know i really nice to put together and no problem with these falling apart, the metal pins, super easy, just, you know, it seems solid um, and easy. So once once it goes on, so at the very end, once it's painted, we're just going to just clip it together, put the pin in, a little super glue, done. It's not going to fall apart like extra thin glue, like on those fully fifth scale tanks and stuff. This thing is solid. So I don't want to touch it too much, it's still a little tacky from the primer, which we'll talk about in a minute. So yeah, went together, no problem at all. Um, and just watching a podcast or YouTube video or just FaceTiming, my kids or whatever it just passed the time and just knocking these guys out um i got one that keeps falling out here for some reason i'm just gonna glue it in before i forget all right Oop. okay i'm just gonna let it sit there to dry a little bit um so yeah, no problem at all. It looks good. I'm glad to took care of ejection pins. It definitely I think make a difference. Um, although we'll see at the very end, if you tune back in when we're done with this build, we'll see if you really do see the tracks. Cause once, you know, these tiger tanks with 10 million wheels on each side, um, we'll see how much, you know, it kind of covers up and what you can actually see. So if it's even worth doing it. So I guess we'll see at the very end, but I think just for me, you know, the kit the size and I don't mind putting the work in. Plus. There's no big rush, you know, spend that money on a kit. Why rush through and not take care of ejection pin marks? Just knock it out really quickly, you know, take your time, enjoy it, and um, yeah, go from there. So put them all together, and then I had this left over from um, building actually these um, storage things here. Remember I did a video six, nine months ago where I took these plastic containers and built like a storage cup, storage containers, like cubbies on my desk. Um, so I used this Krylon Fusion. Um, all in one, five times matte primer, um, matte black. So I wasn't gonna take the airbrush out and take care of all of this tracks, it, it's too much. So I just took it outside, gave it a coat of this guy, um, let it dry, moving around, you know, different sides and stuff, and it actually worked a great job. So just as a base coat primer, got this thing matte black, and then what we'll do next is, once I built the other side, we'll get the spray booth and with the airbrush, we'll actually physically paint it. Um, so. A little bit too minds what I'm going to do here. I don't want to make this model a hugely weathered, like caked in mud kind of deal. I don't want it factory fresh, so I'm going to make a compromise. I think I'm just going to um, paint it, have, like pin wash it, and then uh, maybe a, a dry brushing and stuff, like a compromise, a lightly used kind of look. Um, so tracks, you know, like slightly brushed and steel on and stuff. I don't want to um, come with this thing in mud and all that kind of crap. I don't, I don't think it's going to look right at 16th scale. Um, I don't know, we'll see how we go, but that's my plan. I don't, again, I don't want to go crazy or whatever in here, just, um, but I don't definitely want to pick out the details and do something. So this is perfect for a base coat of black, and then we'll use our mix, um, which I use from Andy Hobby, Andy's Hobby Headquarters, whatever, when he used to build videos back in the day, I mean, just that doesn't do many anymore, but um, he had a tank, tank color, which I'll need to dig up and look. I think it's like brown and, um, I don't know, various colors. I'll look it up and find out what it is, but, um, would wear airbrush that on and with black we'd have to go so thick it's just basically a misting coat um to get that trank cut trank color track color done so that is really where we're at with this son so i'm getting yeah, about six hours to do this one so i figured about another six to the other side so let me get working on the other side get that primed up and then we'll get this thing into paint and get these tracks painted up um i'm ready to go okay so you can see we've got two sets of tracks all made up um and no problem at all. The second one I actually did um, on a Sunday, basically just took me a day, just throughout the day doing it. So again, about six hours-ish, I'd say. So to get both sets assembled, uh, well, if you don't do any ejection pin marks with it, how easy these went together, you could probably do them in like five, 10 minutes per side. No problem, it's all easy. Just put the pins in and, and a little bit of glue to hold them in. 
Um, but taking care of all the action pin marks, I'm thinking about round about probably 10 to 15 manpower hours is what you should probably get on budget, you know, time wise to do this. But definitely worth the effort. Um, now you see here we've got different colors. This one's just a primer, as I mentioned before, we just primed in black. And this set here, I've done my first paint color. And you see it's like a browny kind of rusty kind of color. So took this from Andy Andy's Hobby HQ about oh, I don't know five years ago before he started doing all his like reviews. When he actually built like tanks old school white way. And I had this made up, this paint in this Tammy jar. Um, I had it made up for years. Um, and basically I put it up on the screen, but I believe it's 75% um, NATO brown, 20% NATO black, and 5% flat red. Um, now, the screen, why I put on the graphic on the screen will be confirmed exactly if I got it slightly wrong, but um, that's what I believe it is. Um, and I don't measure this exactly, it's all done by eye, just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be exact, just those kind of ratios. So basically, a bunch of NATO brown, um, about a quarter NATO black, and then a little bit of red just mixed in. So it gets you this kind of color here, which you see, it's pretty good. Now, didn't use much paint at all because the, the key with this for me was I'm not wasn't going to hose it on with the airbrush. So I airbrushed this and I wasn't going to hose it on or get it real thick coverage, just a light coat, like a light, real light misting coat almost over the whole thing. Um, so there is some still some black visible here and there, which is kind of what I want some kind of break up in the color and stuff. But I um, hope you agree, it's looking pretty good. So again, light, nice light coat, um, which dries in you know minutes. So what I'm gonna do now is I need to dry brush it, because this is steel, so, so dry brush is gonna bring this thing to life. So I'm gonna use my favorite, my dry Necron compound um, from Gaines Workshop, the Citadel one. And you've seen this many times before, it's basically a thick kind of, it's, it is a um, dry brush and paint, but it's very thick. See, it's like a almost, I don't know, like a paste or something. So. With a soft brush, I'm going to take that, I'm going to dry brush the whole set, um, see how it looks, and we're good to go. We're going to do the other side too. Now, off camera here, I always forget to do this with tanks. Um, there's obviously track links that go on the side of the turret. Now, I always, always forget, paint all my tracks up, and at the very end, oh god, now I've got the airbrush out, paint it all again. So this time I remembered. So, exact same way as these tracks, um, pride and black, and then it's a light coat of the um, of this guy, and we'll we'll weather these up and we'll paint them exactly the same way as we do the main track. So seven of these links. Um, one of them is an M1, which is different, which is P4. I've marked on here with a bit of masking tape. The rest is P3. Um, and they all go together on the side of the turret, like I mentioned. So these aren't the same. They are on the, um, the sprues you have to cut out. They're not loose in the bag, but these ones are slightly different, obviously with the um, attachment points and stuff attached. So yeah, so make sure you paint those up at the same time. Just save you a little bit of work um, later on trying to you know get all the brushes out and replicating what you already did basically. Um, so cool, so I'm gonna start dry brushing these. Um, nice soft brush, I need to find um, looking around here, see if I can find one, and then we'll get going. Br dry brush it, see how we look, and then kind of figure out what we're gonna do from there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and um, dry brush these tracks. Um, we're not doing anything too complicated here, just keeping it simple. Um, so Here's my painted tracks. And all we're gonna do is take my Citadel dried Necron compound. And you can see it's kind of like, I don't know how to explain, like a paste kind of almost. Thick, gooey kind of thing. It's not liquid paint by any means. And I've got this um, brush, dry brushing. This is like a knockoff of an artist opius. This is um, a Mr. Hobby brush. Don't buy these, they're crap. Um, they just, um, shedding like br bristles everywhere. Um, so yeah, don't buy these ones at all. Um, avoid them, but you want a nice soft brush or whatever just to kind of get in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a uh, built scrap paper towel right here. And I'm just gonna take my little bit of paint and just write off the extra ex excess. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run in between each track and over each track and the sides. So basically kind of open them out. Spray lightly brush, you don't want tons of stuff on here. So in between each link, pick out those high points. And then over the top, 
just like that, the sides. sides do you think in real life you know there'll be, there'll be more rubbing and more um, wear on the sides here so that's kind of like the other side again just get in between I missed a couple here don't need to go too crazy and on the other side simply just load up a little bit more paint Got to hit the the guide horns, the top. Again, the sides. And just in between, just give it that metallic sheen. Very lightly, not coating on. You see that came way too much came paint came off there. Rub it off a little bit before it dries. Same here. a little bit and there you go easy as that um, now here's one I made earlier and I hope you agree that um, it looks doesn't look plastic it looks heavy metal kind of color um, really happy how that one turned out and um, yeah on the inside there too a machine with steel kind of heavy look to it um, and there we go so I don't think I need to go too crazy with this I don't want to take it a step further than just giving it a dry brush because I haven't built a tank yet right this is the first thing we're doing so I want to build a tank first get that painted and, and then go from there in terms of weathering what we're going to, we're going to do rusting or what we're going to do if we are going to do that so I'll get a tank built get that painted up and then we'll tie the weathering any more weathering if we do do it um, to the rest of the tank so I'm going to video here, this is it, um, you see, this is my finished one, a lot of work actually going into that, getting together, painting and dry brushing, pretty straightforward, right, nothing too um, crazy there, um, but yeah, looking good, looking nice, heavy kind of look to it, weighted kind of look, which we want, and it's going to sag as well, um, with the weight of these links, so there we go, so next week I'll come back, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, I'm thinking maybe I might do the turret and take care of that barrel with this crazy, um, seam line and do all the tough stuff first and then come back to do all the fun stuff kind of later on um, we do have 24 wheels to build as well which is um, going to be like this a little bit repetitive i guess um, so there we go tracks done um, well one set done i'll get the rest done off off air and um, by the time we come back next week or next time um, these will be done completely thank you for watching as always i'll catch you next time bye